It's now time to explore some compound interest questions with our new equation. A equals P 1 plus R to the power of T. A equals the amount owed at a particular time. P equals the principal or the original amount borrowed. R is the interest rate and T is the time involved in this loan. The parts of this equation that cause the most confusion are the R and the T. There are two ways to help make sense of these. Let's explain both and then you can decide which makes most sense to you. Method 1. We just leave the equation exactly as is. A equals P 1 plus R to the T. And then we explain that R and T are both in terms of the compounding period. Let's add that to their description here. R becomes the interest rate per compounding period. And then T would be the time involved with this loan, but it's in compounding periods. That is, T equals the number of compounding periods in the life of the loan. Method two. We sometimes add extra details to the equation to remember them this way. A equals P 1 plus R over N to the power of NT. Again, A and P are the exact same as before, but in this case, the R is the interest rate per year, the T equals the time in years this time, and we add an extra variable N. And that's the number of compounds per year. In the end, these two equations do the exact same thing. So you just decide which one you want to use. Let's give them a try. Example 1. A somewhat familiar situation. Jerry borrows $500 from Linda for five years with an interest rate this time of 12%. And it's compounded monthly. How much does Jerry owe at the end of the five years? So let's use our original equation looking like this. A equals P 1 plus R to the T. And we identify that our compound period is, well, we're told that it's compounded monthly. So the compounding period is one month. So plugging in our numbers, well, the P is 500, that's easy. Now our interest rate. R is supposed to be per the compounding period. So what is the interest rate per month? Well, if it's 12% per year, then it would be half that 6% for a half a year, or for one month, it would be 12 divided by 12 is 1% per month. So 1% is 0 0.01. Now for the T, it's time, but remember, if we use this equation, it's the number of compounding periods. It's five years, but again, there are 12 compounding periods per year. So the total number of compounding periods would be five years times 12 months per year equals 60 compounding periods. And so we're ready. A equals 500. 1 plus 0 0.01 .01, all to the power of 60. Now, remembering Bedmas, we'll do the brackets, 1.01, .01, and then the exponents, that is 1.01 .01 to the power of 60, and then our final multiplication. We times that by 500. Of course, many scientific calculators would allow you to put the entire equation in and just hit enter. Either way, you'll end up with $908 and 35 cents. We round to the nearest cent. If we decided to use the other form of the equation, we'd have A equals P 1 plus R over N to the power of N times T. Again, let's identify our compounding period right away, one month. So plugging in our numbers, P equals 500. The interest rate was 12% per year, so 0.12. The time is in years, so we just have 5 for our t. Lastly, n equals our number of compound periods per
per year. So that would be 12. And we plug it all in. Let's clear up these two areas with the ends. And we see that, in fact, we end up with the exact same equation at this point. Thus, again, you'll end up with $908.35, rounding to the nearest cent. So which equation should you use? Well, the first equation is easier to remember and write down, but it does require that you're able to remember and think of everything in compounding periods. And if you can do that, then the first equation might be your preference. Example 2. Bruce borrows $12,000 from a bank for two years at an interest rate of 8%, and it's compounded daily. So how much does Bruce owe at the end of the two years? So using our simplest equation, a equals p, 1 plus r to the t. And we should identify our compounding period, which is, well, we're told that we compound daily. So our compounding period is one day. Plugging in our numbers, p equals 12,000. Our interest rate r is supposed to be per the compounding period. So what is the interest rate per day? Well, if it's 8% per year, then it's 0 0.08 divided by 365. That is, there's 365 days in a year. Now we can calculate that now, or we can just put the fraction into our equation like this and calculate it later. For the t, that's time, but in compounding periods again. So two years, and there's 365 days or compounds per year. So two times 365 is 730 compounding periods. There we go. And plugging that into our calculator, we get $14,081.88, rounding to the nearest cent. Had we decided to use the other form of this equation, well, we would have the exact same equation. It would end up that we would have n in place here, and once we plug in the n's, we'd come up with the exact same solution. So really, it's pretty easy to see the similarities, and if you can think in terms of compounding periods, perhaps just go with the simplest equation.